Alright, hey guys, so I'm doing a quick video today. This is kind of a impromptu video. Um, I had a, another video that I was going to do that I had planned, but this morning I watched a video um, on YouTube that was... I don't know if you're familiar with Ravi Zacharias, but he has, I think it's uh, Ravi Zacharias International Ministry. And they do a lot of apologetic videos. And the one that I watched today was the best answer I've ever seen on this question. Um, and I did want to speak on it because I felt really I felt in my spirit that this is an important topic that a lot of people have questions about and I felt like this was more urgent to speak on today so this one I'm just gonna do a really quick summary of some of the highlights in the video and kind of my take on it and the clip that I'm referencing is actually only about eight minutes long I'll link it below so the the speaker his name was Abdu Murray so this is a question. Um, my question is, um, how does one know that Christianity is the one true way of living in a world that thinks that no, not one religion is superior than another and that we should all coexist? Basically, uh, it's what's wrong with pluralism or universalism. And there's a lot of wisdom in what he said so i'll just kind of cite a few of the points so i'll be cutting a little bit back and forth so the first note that i had i guess kind of the notion of pluralism and universalism is that all the mainstream belief systems are the same and that we should all coexist together and that they're all compatible and none is greater than the other or none is more true than the other a couple of things that stood out was that all the main even if you just look at the mainstream different religious systems like Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, things like that, they are not <laughs> the same. They're very much different. Um, not only are they not the same, but they are, some of them are mutually exclusive, meaning that they can't even coexist in terms of the other faiths. Like they can't both be right, basically. The statement that all roads lead to God is just not true. The statement itself cannot be true and it would actually be impossible because they all say contradictory things and hold to different worldviews and opinions than one another so they can't all be coexisting in a sense that they are all saying true statements. It's an excellent, excellent question. Fantastic question. First is the underlying assumption that pluralism, it's a good thing in the sense that no one worldview becomes forcibly dominant over others. We can't enforce Christianity or enforce Islam or atheism on people. People are trying to do these things, but we shouldn't because I don't think force actually leads to truth. I think debate, civilized debate leads to truth. And the problem with the statement that all religions are equal or maybe non, all equally invalid shuts down debate. When you call someone intolerant, you're no longer actually engaging in debate. You're just simply shutting them up. That's a way to force non-discussion. So we hear this phrase, right? All roads lead to God. You've heard this phrase most likely, and most likely some of you have heard this phrase, all roads lead to God. You've heard this, correct? Yeah. Okay, so here's the problem. The, the, the statement, all roads lead to God, is meant to respect all roads as if they're equally valid. It doesn't actually respect all roads. It disrespects all the roads because they don't even claim to lead to God. So if you're saying all roads lead to God, you're not taking any of them seriously. How do I know this? Let's take a look at Buddhism. Buddhism, as Buddha taught it, didn't teach you and me that we are going to go to heaven. It taught us that we don't even have a self. The self is an illusion. All we are is an accretion of karma. And that once you, whoever you is actually, works off your karma through the death, cycle of death and rebirth, you become extinguished. You don't go to God. Hinduism tells you that you are God. And that you are, that I'm God and you are God. Now you're not a God and I'm not a God. We are all the God. So we're under the illusion of separateness. That is not the same thing that Islam teaches, which is that there is a God out there who is not me and that I am not to have relationship with him beyond master and servant. And that's all there is to it. And that when I go to heaven, I go to a paradise God creates for me, but he himself is not there. Christianity says that we were made to be in relationship with God, which is why Genesis chapter 3 says that God walked and talked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. And we are eventually going to get back to the state where we see God face to face, where we're actually engaged in relationship eternally from him. So you see how all roads don't even claim to lead to God? So when you say all roads lead to God, you're not respecting them, you're disrespecting them because you're not taking them seriously. And then he goes on to some of the other points. He gives cause for 
the belief in a God figure and his worldview and why it's rational to believe that and why hold to the view that Jesus would be the one true God other than like Muhammad or Buddha or whatever. Once we understand that this idea that they're all equally valid can't possibly be true, they could all be equally invalid, but they can't also all be the same. Now the question is, how do we know that Christianity is also true? I love the way you phrased the question because it wasn't just, how do we know they're false? That isn't it, it's how do we know this is true? And that comes back to me on two claims. First, that there is a God that exists, and I have numerous philosophical arguments. Vince gave some on the scientific level, but I think there's also philosophical arguments as well to believe that there is a God, the very fact that the universe itself, um, as a, the universe is contingent. In other words, it depends on something else to explain itself. Ultimately, you have to have a being you have to stop somewhere. Everything that exists must be explained by something else unless you come to an unexplained first cause. That's what God is. For a number of other reasons, I believe that God exists. But why the Christian God? Because Jesus claimed to be the Son of God, incarnate, who takes away the sins of the world. And then he dies on a cross, and then he rises from the dead. Now, if he was wrong, he would have stayed dead. If he was right, he would have risen from the dead. Because they asked him a very reasonable question. They said, by what, John chapter 2, and in other places, by what authority do you do these things? Who do you think you are? And he says, when you destroy this temple, meaning my body, I will raise it up again in three days. That's either true or it's false. An opinion is irrelevant. So if he died and stayed dead, we would have no reason to believe him. If he died and rose again, we have every reason to believe him. People often ask me, why Jesus and not Muhammad or Buddha or Confucius or Krishna? Here's the reason. Jesus died and rose from the dead. And guys who rise from the dead tend to have credibility. Four, four main points that he had was one that historically... Jesus, it is proven that Jesus was a real person, that he lived, and that he died through crucifixion. Two, that Jesus rose, the risen Jesus appeared to several hundred people after his resurrection. Three, there were skeptics that wrote books in the New Testament. They weren't all friendly to the faith. They were opposed to the faith, like James and Paul eventually becoming converted. And then the, the empty tomb is the other point in his argument. Then we see the skeptics, Paul and James, they're converted. James was a skeptic. You read this in the Gospels. Paul was an enemy of the Christian faith. I'm a trial lawyer. Now, when you have somebody on the other side who disagrees with you so violently in that sense that they're like the worst witness you could possibly have on, on, on the other side of you, but they suddenly switch their position because they realize you're right, what do you do with that witness? You put him on the stand and you let him talk for days and days and days to the jury. The best kind of eyewitness testimony is somebody who thought you were so wrong who now thinks you're right and it costs them something too to mm -hmm. say it. They're not just making it up. It costs them something. That's exactly what you have in Paul. It cost Paul everything. He was an enemy of the Christian faith and switched and claimed to be the champion of the Christian faith based on his claim, I saw him with my own eyes. If he didn't, he knew he was lying. Why would you die on purpose for something you knew was purposely a lie that gets you nowhere? So we have the crucifixion, the appearances of the disciples, the skeptics Paul and James converted, and then you have the empty tomb. We know where it was. It was a Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. We know that it was empty. And I wanted to close on a couple points. One of the things we get into today, a lot of people talk about coexisting, and I totally agree that we need to coexist. We're all on this planet together. However, it's a lot of time is preached from a place of tolerance. A lot of people claim that Christianity is not tolerant. Or what I would submit to you is that um, Christianity goes beyond tolerant, where at its core, it's about love for people. So it's not just I'm going to tolerate your beliefs. It's that I love you and I want the best for you. And I think at the core of Christianity, that's where um, a lot of people get it wrong, is it's about love. And it's about love for your fellow man, love for your other people. And there's a few misconceptions that I wanted to get into. Uh, one is that if you disagree with someone, that it means that you hate them. So, I mean, obviously this is factually incorrect and it's just, it doesn't make sense. Like just because we dis disagree about a point or have a differing opinion, that has nothing to do with if I love or I hate you. We can disagree and I still have love for you. So because people have different beliefs doesn't mean that there is animosity or hate there and we need to be able to disagree and talk about points through discourse and debates um, lovingly. 
The second misconception, people have this view of Christianity being, because it talks about Jesus is the way and the truth, that it's an exclusive thing where it's like, we're better than you and we're gonna hold this over you for a Christian that very exclusive and mightier than thou or higher than thou kind of mentality. But I think that's a really grave misrepresentation of what Christianity is because at its core, it's not exclusivism, it's actually inclusive. It's one of the most inclusive belief systems that I know because you don't have to be of a certain ethnicity or bloodline or you don't have to do a bunch of works or to attain a certain um, status or anything. It's really just about your, your faith and your walk with God. And, and believing in God. It's like accepting that he is real and you can have a relationship with him. And that's open to anybody. And so he, he touches on these two points really well. And so I wanna include those here. If you wanna contend with the Christian faith, you contend with this central fact, the fact that says all other claims that deny the resurrection can't be true, but this one is true. And it's not just true in a way that excludes you. It's a way that in, it, it's true in that it, it includes you. He didn't die and rise for Christians, that doesn't even make any sense. He died and rose so that we could all know Jesus, know God. That's the whole point. In closing, I try to include links and clips from the video and all these different things for you guys to check it out. Just kind of a summary of it. I try to encapsulate all these really briefly. But like I said, the video that I watched that was inspired to do this video is only about eight minutes. And so I encourage you guys to check it out. I would love to hear your guys' opinions and your thoughts on it. What do you think? Do you think that he answered these questions well? If you feel like maybe the answers weren't fully understood or if you have like follow-up questions and things that maybe weren't answered or that you still are wondering about feel free to leave the comments below and like with all my videos i want this to be very much a dialogue and a forum for, for us to have discourse and really talk through issues and matters if we don't really talk about what we believe and we're just we're just suppressing it then we're not really growing even in ourselves but especially as a community whether you're a believer or not these are important topics i feel like are very important to discuss and vital to our culture and society. So please leave a comment below if you like this video. Be sure to share it. If you're not subscribed, click on the button and click on the little bell icon if you want to be updated on some of my new stuff. So I hope you guys liked it. I'll check you out in the next one. All right.